I am Groot. It's a weekly show that gets so far off track, you'll have to stick around to see just where we end up. I am Groot. That's right, today we're talking about Guardians of the Galaxy. The following podcast contains spoilers for Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. You have been warned. So Wesley. Mm-hmm. I watched Gu- I watched Guardians of the Galaxy this weekend. I assume you did too, because that's what we talked about. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So what what, what did you what what are your thoughts? Um before we dive into it too much, I'm gonna give my basic generic thoughts of it. That's kind, of, that's kind of what I want. That's kind of what I'm looking for. And then I just go into this long four-hour explanation. No, I'm kidding. Uh, so, my thought of the movie is it was a good movie. One of the better ones that Marvel has made so far. But, I think while they had a good plot and a good story, I don't think they told it in the best way. And I think the pacing was a little off for the first half of the movie. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I can kind of see a little bit of where you're coming from. I will say, I think it's the best Marvel movie since Endgame. I, I think it's better than No Way Home, which, you know, the more I think about it, No Way Home was literally just a nostalgia trip. It's all, it's all that we're going for. What about Far From Home? Far From Home was after uh That Endgame. is true, but I, I, I think I think Guardians Three is better than than uh, Far From Home Two. Okay. I, I, I don't I don't think it's I disagree, you know, but but I'm okay with that. I don't think it was one of the you know, I don't think it's the was the best Marvel movie, but I I mm-hmm. think it did the franchise or I think it did the Guardians uh trilogy justice as an as an ending. I I, I really enjoyed it. It it's it was one of the first first Marvel movies in a while that gave me that old MCU feeling. Yeah, no, it definitely felt like okay, it felt like a Guardians movie, and it felt like a Marvel movie. My problem with it overall was while it felt all like that, I had a train of thought. Um, I don't know. It here you go. I, th- I found my train. All right. So, Guardians of the Galaxy, in my opinion, has always been like a step above the major- the average of the other Marvel movies, okay? There might be another Marvel movie that's better than the Guardians, but on average, the Guardians movies tend to be better than the, than the rest of the MCU. Now, this one, yes, is still better on average than the rest of the MCU is now, but I don't think it's as good as... Volume one or two. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give you. It's definitely not better than volume one. Personally, I think it's better. Than vo- I think it was better than volume two. I'm not gonna lie. But, I remember the last time I saw what volume two was, but vo- okay. To, okay, to me, volume two was honestly. It is. I mean, it, it was a good movie, but it it was kind of forgettable. It, it was, but like, and, okay, and that that's that's one of the main reasons I would I will put Volume Three over it is because it is kind of a forgettable movie. I, but, I feel like the way that Marvel's been going, though, like I don't know, my my like I said, my biggest problem starting out, like I got into the movie halfway through the movie, and I was like, okay, now this is starting to really turn into a good movie. This is really starting to turn into a Guardians movie. Before that, like, the rest of it seemed, like, the pacing seemed real off. Um, I understand, like, okay, 
The pacing seemed off. While Adam Warlock's character seemed like it, it wasn't it wasn't like out of the blue, it still seemed forced. Um I think they could have done better with that character. Uh and but that all being said, like I love where they ended it. I love how they ended it. Um I love this I love looking more into Rocket's backstory. And like overall, I think it was a good movie. I would watch it again. But elements of it I felt like were misplaced and I think elements of it were just were just off. It didn't it didn't the whole thing didn't flow as well as I think it could have. Or should have. Okay, I I definitely agree with you on the Adam Warlock bit because like that it was kind of a forced bit in that I I don't know necessarily how to um explain it, but he, you know he's definitely kind of forced or felt really forced, and yep. he honestly didn't get as much screen time as I think that character deserved. Um, mm -hmm. well, he probably will in the future. With the way that they ended it, so yeah, um, which hopefully they do the character justice. Then you also mentioned Rocket here too. Now, Rocket's character arc in this movie was perfect. Mm -hmm. Oh, it, it was it, it, it was amazing. That that was probably one of the best parts of the movie. Like, yes, we did get more character development with uh, Star Lord, but that was you know. Really, Star Lord was the main character in Volume One and Volume Two. Mm -hmm. This movie was really about Rocket. I, I like the focus on Rocket in this movie, and like like you said, I I hundred percent agree that his arc with everything like it was it was amazing. Like they did really well with that, and so part of my thought, and we we talked about this a little bit um, last. I think last week, talking about how uh, it might have been the week before when we were talking about Star Wars, um, with how like some of the uh, TV shows should have just been movies because they had to have filler episodes and parts of episodes had to have filler in them just so they could you know get a time frame in. Mm -hmm. A lot of ways, I felt like this movie was very much kind of in that same way where they had a general story, but to 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 fit the you know two hour or so time time frame that they had. They had to add in little bits here and there that weren't necessarily necessary. Like you can add in things like comedy. You can add in things like, you know, uh, foreshadowing. So like that, but none of those, like none of the elements really seemed like they were that they just seemed kind of like, here yeah, we're sticking this in here because we, we can't really think of much else to do here. And so that's mostly where my, my complaints with the movie come, but you know, like, you know, th th this this was a Rocket movie. This was this movie was about Rocket. It was about his origins. It was about saving him. Which you think about it, it was a Rocket movie, but Rocket as Rocket had very little screen time. <laughs> you know, because yeah, he was dying yeah, most of the movie. I was thinking about that too. But and also, it was really good. Also, one, one thing I want to point out too is like, so you know, one of the big things that uh, I heard a lot of people were speculating about before. The movie came out was that one of the characters was going to die, and most people said it was going to yeah. either be Rocket or Drax. Yeah, but honestly, like, soon, pretty much as soon as uh, Rocket got injured, I was like, "Yeah, they're not going to do that." Because why, why would they spend the whole movie trying to, you know, save a character that's going to die in the end? Yeah, I kind of did think at that one point where he uh, flatlined there for a second. I kind of thought, like, you know, because up until that point in the movie, you're watching it and you're like, okay, this movie is, is about Rocket. You know, this is Rocket's story arc. You know, like you said, the past two movies have been about Quill. Okay, now this is about Rocket, you know? Mm. And and then, then he flatlined, and I was like, maybe they're going to, like, do a 180 here and turn it around and be like, you know, Quill, as a B-plot, B -plot has been, like, dealing with all his loss. And dealing with this stuff about Gamora and all this, that, and the other thing. And it's like they might just completely one eighty and be like, "Yeah, it's a rocket movie, but you know what? Now it's a, it's a, it's a Quill movie, and we're going to focus more on on the loss that Quill's had." I was like, "Okay, you know, I I might be able to get behind that plot, you know, depending on where it goes." 
Um, but ultimately, mm-hmm. like, I, I was happy with the, you know, the, the arc that they gave Rocket. And, uh, you know, at the end of it, obviously, he takes, he takes the mantle as, as the head of Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, and I think that that was a good place to leave it. I think Quill going and taking care of some of the emotional baggage that he has is, uh, is a good thing with him going back to Earth and spending time with his, uh, you know, grandpa. I am very interested to see because at the end of it, it said Star Lord, Star Lord will return. I'm interested mm-hmm. to see how and in what way he ends up coming back. But, um, and I'm also interested to see with the, uh, with James Gunn leaving where Guardians of the Galaxy is going to be going. Yeah, that, that is a, another thing that I, I, I've thought about too. I kind of thought that the Guardian, like the Guardians of the Galaxy would be like as the, standalone movies would be done with James Gunn leaving. But, you know, they, they kind of did set it set it up to have more Guardians of the Galaxy movies with Rocket leading the team, and then, again, like you said, the, you know, the legendary Star-Lord will return. Yeah. I, I don't know. In what way, like, you know, you, you in your mind, I guess you were thinking, like, uh, I hadn't put much thought into it, so I don't really have, I didn't think about this. But like with James Gunn leaving, you're like, well, maybe they're going to end the Guardians of the Galaxy uh, movies, you know, by by kind of basically tying all all the loose ends with everything going on there, um, as much as they can with the fact that Marvel is branched out in so many different directions, and with the Guardians of the Galaxies too. Um, but with all that in mind, like how did how did you think it was going to end with that in mind, to the point where like another Guardians movie wouldn't be needed? Well, except I honestly did think that, because, uh, uh, you know, that was one thing that I think, I think James Gunn had actually mentioned before the movie came out that it was going to be in a, like, a really emotional movie, which, I mean, it was, mm-hmm. but, yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of people assumed that that mean, meant that we were going to have characters die. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I kind of imagine that that might be what, what, you know, what, what may have happened, what may have what am I trying to say? I kind of imagine that, that you thought that was going to happen. Yeah. yeah. Um. But honestly, I am kind of glad. What are you thinking? Continue. Continue. I am kind of glad that it didn't go that way, just because of the way everyone was saying, like I said, Rocket or Drax was going to die, or both. Mm-hmm. Well, I thought I'm Drax not... was uh, done for almost. Uh, oh, no, he got when shot. They were he on got that, shot. Um, because he got shot, and I'm like, oh no, Dra- like, Drax is dead. <laughs> and then it, he gets back up, and I'm like, oh. Very, it seemed very out of place. I'll say that, because I think he was just joking around or something like that. I don't remember what it was specifically, but it seemed very out of place in the moment. And I was like, he can't be dead. But man, he looks mm. dead. <laughs> like, he got hit hard. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's let's, a bad place to do it, but... let's talk. Let's talk about that again, too. They did that three times with the fake outs. Mm-hmm. First with Drax, then with Rocket, and then with uh, Peter. They did it three times. Oh. Let's talk about Peter real quick. When I saw that, I was like, if he dies, I'm about to walk out of this movie theater because, like, you cannot have him die. The, the legendary Star Wars. You can't have him die just running back to get a get a MP3 player or whatever. Like, I know it's important to him. But no, you can't do that. Mm. Which, I mean, I am kind of glad that they did uh, have Adam Warlock save him. Because, like, you know, they, they had said, you know, in, in the, like, earlier, like, a couple, couple minutes before that, you know, they, uh, who was it that told at, or at Adam Warlock that, uh, you know, everyone deserves a second chance? I think Groot was saying it, and I think Drax translated it, I think. That's right. I think, yeah. Um, I think you're right. But, you know, they, they'd done, they'd had that moment, but still, he hadn't redeemed, he hadn't actually redeemed himself. Yeah. Which, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad they actually had, they actually did have some character development with him, even though it was, I do still think it was lacking. Um, it was very little, and I hope to see more as they go on, because, I mean, I think the character can be really cool. Um, I have not seen that actor, Eustace, 
uh, I don't know what his actual name is, but I know he played Eustace in Narnia movies. Um, but uh, I have not seen him in a whole lot besides, I think, that and then the Maze Runner movies. But I think he's mm-hmm. a you know good actor. So I, I was I was kind of, you know, like, hey, cool. That's it. cool to see him in that role. Um, and then obviously they went, you know, the way they went with him throughout the movie. And it's like, well, that is what it is. But, you know, I'm assuming with the way the MCU is like, there's going to be a lot more of that character in the future. So, mm. you know, we'll kind of see how that goes from there. Yeah, And again, I actually don't know if they're going to be any more Guardians of the Galaxy movies. You know, they, they might just play roles in Avengers movies. Or they might but, branch off and have like some other name for what they're going to call, you know, those movies. And it's like mm-hmm. not the same technically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What What do you think? Uh, or what, what did you think of the High Evolutionary? Okay, so I understand when it comes to these one off, more or less one off movies. You can't have a big bad that's too big to be defeated in one movie. But I feel like he went from... Okay, I feel like he could have been a much bigger and badder villain than he was. But Mm -hmm. the way that they kind of developed him throughout the movie, they made him very lackluster. And it's like, well, that's kind of how it's been with most of them. Like, most Marvel movies are like that. Like, they follow the, the very you know, same formula that every superhero movie follows. And it's not like people don't love them. It's just they follow the same formula. It's where the hero has a conflict, confronts the conflict, gets beaten by it, and then rises above it to win. It's the Mm -hmm. same thing over and over again. You know, obviously, you can even look that in, like, Infinity War, they lost at the end of it. But Infinity War was not the end of the story. Endgame was... And Mm -hmm. but it still had it still had a little bit different elements to it. Like it's still they won in the end, but at a cost. And and I think that was one good thing that that that, you know, in game and Infinity War had going for it um, to make it different. But like, you know, since then, they've been doing the same, essentially the same kind of a plot where it's like, you know, you get beaten down. But you know what? You rise above it and then you beat the enemy. And it's like you can't have good villains when you do that. Because, you know, so so he, he seemed he, he, a lot more powerful starting out, and then yes. he kind of dropped off as the movie went on when when they had to beat him. They they beat him way too easily, in my opinion. Yeah, for for the Not, way kind of like uh, Khan, for the way they hyped him up, kind of like Khan in uh yeah, kind of like Khan in um not Khan, uh Kang in uh Ant Man, like they beat him way too easily. Hmm. So, here's my thing with uh, him. So, I think he was a one of the better Marvel villains, but that's really not saying much. Because, like you said, yeah. almost all the Marvel villains, even, like, Phase 1 and Phase 2, suck. Like, yeah. it's... Like, and, you know, that, that's one of the biggest criticisms of, criticisms of the MCU, is their villains are terrible. And like I, I mm-hmm. think, I think they had they could have had a better potential with with him, because he you know, it was very you know especially for Rocket you know of course since, since you know their family the, with the rest of the Guardians it was personal too but especially with Rocket it was you know he was a very personal villain. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I, I th- and I, I think, liked that aspect of it. Yeah, I, I think but they that was did about a it. good job. I think they did a good job with that. But you're right, they did kind of build him up to be nothing, pretty much. Like, you know, like he, mm-hmm. you know he was yeah. in the first couple scenes where we actually see him use his, uh, like, gravity power or whatever it was. You know, he seems, like, unstoppable. Mm-hmm. And then... Yeah. Like, the okay. Guard- the, the, okay, I, I, I did like that scene where the Guardians uh, fight him, but it ended way Oh, too yeah, late. that was good. It, 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 that was a, that was a good scene, and I think the reason it was a good scene was because of the emotion behind it with Rocket. But yeah, like and, and you know his line. I think I, I 
obviously I've seen this movie once and I tried to analyze it as much as I could that one time through while also enjoying it. But uh, I think his line was like, uh, you know, I'm not, uh, um, I'm not whatever, you know, the guy, he, he was listing off his number. He's like, he's like, my name's uh, Rocket. And he drops down. It's like Rocket Raccoon or whatever, you know, like, and it was like, you know, chilling moment, whatever. And like, mm. cool. He shoots him. And then like, you know, the rest of them come in and like just beat him down. And then Gamora just stabs him, you know, with the ruthless uh, assassin that she, you know, was trained to be and the killer she was training to be. And it's like, OK, I'm OK with that. Like, I'm OK with all that aspect of it. But at the same time, you know, with how powerful you showed him to be, is this really how he's going to go out? You know? Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, I think like, a lot of that. Like scale, I think a lot of the. I think a lot ahead. of that final. Um, and this is honestly something you can point out with a lot of again a lot of Marvel villains. I think with that final fight scene, mm -hmm. it should have been more one on one Guardians and High Evolutionary than the like guard than uh, his army against you know the all the other uh, people in nowhere. I, I mean, I, I like yeah. this. I like those scenes. Those scenes were cool. But yeah, again, it would. I think we should have seen more of the one-on-one -on -one kind of fight scenes with, with the high evolutionary because, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's another. That's another thing, like, like with Marvel with Marvel villains. Why does every villain need an army? Why can't you have a villain yeah. that's powerful enough? Like, why why can't you have a villain that's powerful enough to fight the entire Avengers single-handedly? Yeah, e even Thanos had an army. Like, you know, yeah. <laughs> And, and I, Thanos could have fought in the Avengers single handedly. The the obviously the reason behind it is because you know if they show the Avengers getting beaten down too much or the Guardians of the Galaxy getting beaten down too much, then it's like how are they going to overcome this? Well, you know we can come up with a reason, but no one's going to like it. Well, then you know so their their answer is we can have a lot more action with uh, minions and and armies getting fought off, and then uh, you know. To save the big bad for a little bit later. And it's like, well, yeah, you can do that. Or you can maybe think a little bit harder. And I'm not saying necessarily that I could do this, but obviously these people get paid to do it. So, you know, think a little harder, find a better way to make a good, strong villain that can be beaten, but also is extremely hard. Like, make it like that fin final boss fight that you gotta do like four or five times. You know? Mm -hmm. Like, there are ways. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about um, Rocket again real quick. Mm -hmm. What did you think about all the flashback scenes? I liked Rocket's story in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, his his arc, like you said earlier, his arc was, like, perfect. perfect. Like, it was yeah. amazing. And, you know, it... They they did those flashback scenes very, very well to, one, explain why Rocket is like he is now. And, you know, kind of stuff that we've never seen as far as in the MCU. We've never seen these, you know, like where Rocket came from. We didn't know until this movie that, you know, Rocket was a lab experiment, experiment by the High Evolutionary. Um, and so it's like, now we're finding out all these little details about him. And also the uh, the um, other uh, batch of of uh, experiments that were with them. What was it? Lily, mm -hmm. uh, Teeth, uh, and uh, Floor. Yeah. Floor. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's Lila. Uh, the, the other, the other Teeth and Floor. Yeah. Lila. Yeah. Okay. I think Lila. That's what it was. Um, I remembered Floor and Teeth, so you know those those obviously <laughs> stick out. Um. But but I thought they did th that really well because like when they died, while maybe not the most surprising thing in the world, it it was like oh that hurt you know I feel the emotion behind that, and then like you know later on when uh, they do the the scene where where he does flatline and you know they're having a flash where he's like hey can I can I come with y'all and and she's like no so you can but not now like it's not your time mm -hmm. like. That was amazing. I got chills. Like it was all good. And these are ca from characters that have just been in the small segment of the movie. And I think they did a really, really good job with building that emotional attachment to them. 
building that relationship between the between Rocket and um, Lila, you said? Yeah. And I will okay. say, this, the, the so these movies... They did really well with that. So, this movie, for as far as any other Marvel movie, probably had some of the most emotional moments, with the exception of Endgame. Mm-hmm. I think this. I think this movie was the, probably the most emotional. I agree with that. And I, I think I think they did a really good job with that because, like, it, it, it's especially the the scenes with Rocket. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah. And like you said, like that the scene when mm-hmm. uh, you know, like Rocket thing builds the thing to um, for that so that they can escape from the cells. And then, you know, all, all of his mm-hmm. friends die. It's just like, you know, yeah, you, you've just been introduced to these characters, but it hurts a lot. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I, th- I think they did an, a really good job with that. Also, you're talking about Rocket building the key card. Um, that, like, I think that really just shows just how smart Rocket is. Like, yes, Rocket has always been known throughout the movies to be smart, but... He, that's not the like focal point of it of like you know who he is as a character and so they really dived into that a lot more with this like he he basically was showing that in some aspects he was smarter than the high evolutionary because he figured out what they were doing wrong to make their experiments better like the high, the whole entire uh point of the movie was a high evolutionary wanted rocket for his brain to figure out why he was so smart, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's like, it just really, really showed that, that aspect of the movie that, yeah, Rocket's not just, you know, guns and explosions. No, he's, he's like next level genius, you know, over here. He might be a raccoon, but he's got a smart brain in there. Mm -hmm. And you do, I mean, you do see a lot of that in, uh, like more, I guess more subtly in. Yeah. The first two, especially in the prison break or prison escape, because you know mm-hmm. Rocket basically like makes a plan out of nothing to escape. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah. I'm not. Not that it's not shown, but I think they showed it even more so in, in this one. They, they, yeah, you're right. They made it more of a focal point in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um. Because he wasn't a part of most of the action, and they had it in more of the backstory aspect, like. You know, he wasn't blowing things up as much as he usually does. So I think that, you know, with his character, you, you saw it more. Like you said, if, mm-hmm. it was a, more of a focal point. So, mm-hmm. Also, <clears throat> I don't know if you, I don't know if you uh, even noticed it, but do you know this movie had the MCU's first F-bomb? I, yeah. Uh, I so, mean, obviously I noticed the F-bomb. But uh, thinking back on it, yeah. Um, but I just think that it's so funny the... that I think I just think it's so funny that it was just it wasn't even over really anything. <laughs> it was just because Nebula couldn't open the car door. <laughs> yeah, which that was a funny scene. That was a very funny scene. And okay, the, the and comedy in, the comedy in this was good. Like MC, and... it, it was back to Guardians of the Galaxy MCU comedy. Like it was funny. And and it made me like I was laughing multiple yeah, I, I, times. I'm, I'm I'm going I'm going to compare this to Thor: Love and Thunder because that's another one that you know is trying to mm-hmm. be an action comedy. So with Thor: Love and Thunder, I think the problem with that movie is it didn't take itself seriously at all. Like the Guardians yeah. movies have never taken themselves too seriously, but they do in serious moments. Mm-hmm. And this yeah. one did especially. Like, yes, there were tons of jokes, but there were jokes in between the action. In, in between all and, and that's the not, like, plot moments. You you even mentioned how um you know, and I'm not I wouldn't even disagree with this. Like I I hundred percent agree with this statement. But you said how uh this was probably the most emotional MCU movie since or even just with uh the exception of um, Endgame. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yeah, it was a very emotional movie. But while there are aspects that, you know, might make you cry, 
there were other aspects that you know make you cry because you're laughing too hard like it, it really balanced it out really well and i think they they really they got the emotional aspect in it but they didn't stray too far away from the fact that this is still a guardians of the galaxy movie and mm-hmm. it's supposed to be funny you know yeah and yeah, they got both nothing, really well that's another thing too it, it'll have you going straight from like you know on the verge of crying to laughing hysterically you're right yeah it, it and it's, it does it, all over the it place. does it it does it quickly, but I think it manages it mm-hmm. well. Like I said, Thor, yeah, it does it quickly the, and naturally. Because the problem with Thor, the problem I had with Thor: Love and Thunder is it it made jokes about everything, even when mm-hmm. the jokes weren't necessarily needed or appropriate in some of the you know and not instances. really good jokes either. Like, they weren't Mm -hmm. that funny half the time. Like, I think Ragnarok did the same thing. Joked about everything. But Ragnarok, it flowed better. Thor Love and Thunder, I think what they ended up doing... Flow well. I feel like what they ended up doing after, um... After Thor Ragnarok, was they're like, Hey, we've made two Thor movies that are extremely, extremely serious. Like, hardly any comedy, any any this... uh, just dark movies that, you know, hey, and look, they've both been bad. Let's do something different. And they found the right balance for comedy in the movies. And then they're mm-hmm. like, hey, we had a great success with that. Let's try to lean into it even more. And then they ended up coming out with Thor, Love, and Thunder. Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, you went too far. You had it, but you lost it. So so go back to what, what you had, you know. Mm-hmm. And also, I think if... Uh... If Thor had stayed with the Guardians for Volume Three, I think mm-hmm. it would have been a better um, storyline for Thor. At least I don't know how it would have impacted the actual, yeah. you know, this storyline, but I think it would have been better for Thor's character. But anyway, we're <clears throat> we're, we're talking about Gar- Guardians now, not not Thor. Um, we can talk more about yeah. that later on. But um, and here's another thing I, w- I wanted to bring up too. What how what do you what's your opinion on what they did with uh Peter and Gomorrah? How how they handled that. I I have an opinion, but I want to hear your opinion first. Let me dig deep. We watched this Saturday night. Uh let's see, dig deep into that storyline of them. Um all in all, like I didn't think Peter acted a a lot childish in the beginning with it all mm-hmm. and I didn't necessarily like that aspect of it. I I didn't think that that was done well. Um as they got into a little bit more um you know, the little bit of a dynamic that they had between them like it added for some funny moments. Um and all I like how they ended it. Um I'm uh, you know, where you could kind of see Gamora was like, hey, maybe maybe there was a reason that, you know, some other version of me like this guy. I'm not, you know, necessarily going to maybe fall in love with him, but I can understand it. And Peter mm-hmm. kind of finally came to the grips with it. He was like, OK, you know, this is this is just how it is. So. There are aspects, obviously, that laid into the comedy and there are aspects that, you know, were a little bit like. All right, Peter, just shut up about it. Like, you know, um, but I don't know. I don't necessarily hate it, but I feel like, uh, it was what it was, you know? Yeah. So I, I did like their, uh, that their story arc in this movie because, okay, so, you know, you, you start off and, you know, the, the first thing you even see from Quill is he's, you know, pretty much drunk. blackout drunk. Yeah. And, like, I actually had, when, when I went into this, I actually had forgotten about all the Gamora stuff. And then, I, but I then, honestly, then, when, um, when we started the movie, I, I whispered to Sarah, I was like, now I'm going to have to remember where, where all these characters are now. Because it's so, mm. there's so much to the MCU now. It's so hard to keep up with where everyone is at. 
And it, when was the last exactly. time we actually saw the Guardians of the Galaxy? You know? I mean, we we va- we like barely saw them in Love and Thunder, and then the last time we actually saw them would have been in game. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, continue though. But yeah, so I, I had forgotten about all the Gamora stuff, and then I, I remembered after, uh, you know, after after that scene where he was drunk. But, you know, I was thinking about it, and like, you know, that actually, like, that must actually be very hard, knowing, like, mm-hmm. okay, you can you know, like, it's it's not, like, actually losing someone, because, you know... For better or worse, as as brutally honest as this is going to sound, after someone passes away, generally we just like we get over it with time because it's just out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, but you know, actually seeing this person who isn't mm-hmm. the person that you remember, like that, you know, yeah. that that must be you know very. Very hard, but uh, and I think that that's the um, that's that was really Peter's character development in this movie was coming to yeah. grips with that with with mm-hmm. the law lo- with because in Infinity War and in Game we didn't really see him actually come to grips with the loss of Gamora, and yeah. you know you, you know yes there is a Gamora still out there. But I kind of like the fact that they didn't end up, you know, together at the end of this movie because yeah. it is a different Gamora. It's not the same character. You know, it's it is the same character, but it's not the same character. That that last scene with them, I thought was good um, mm-hmm. because it, it shows it shows yeah. like Peter coming to grips with it. He he didn't turn around. He just he stood there, waited, waited to walk off and all that stuff. He wasn't trying to beg her to love him again or stay or anything like that. He was like, OK, this is how it is. And she kind of stopped and, you know, you could see that she was contemplating, like, just different thoughts, you know, whatever it, uh-huh. it you know, ended up being. But like, you know, oh, he's not begging me this time. Or, oh, you know, like I was saying earlier, may, oh, I understand maybe why uh, or, uh, the other version of Gamora loved this man, you know. But uh-huh. but I, I was glad that, they, yeah, they didn't end up together. I think they needed to break the part ways. Uh-huh. And also it leans into the rest of the story with, with the fact that, the Guardians of the Galaxy are breaking up, you know. Mm. Gets taken the, the league the, with the, or the, the original. The original teams breaking up, yeah. The original, original, yeah, yeah. You know, Drax and Gamora, um, and uh, Nebula are, are um, you know, going to be helping out on nowhere, and uh, you know, uh, Peter's on Earth, and Rockets and Groot are taking care of the new Guardians of the Galaxy, and you know, Gamora's off with the Ravengers. And it's like, I think that's a good place to end Guardians of the Galaxy. And you can maybe follow this new branch of them. But as far as that's concerned, we don't need them to have their own stories until there's a bigger story to tell, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, so here, here's one thing that I thought of with uh, with this, too. Why I think it was... A lot better than a lot of the other MCU movies coming out or coming more, that have come out recently is mm-hmm. it didn't spend half of its runtime setting up other movies. Yeah. Oh, it jumped to the plot like extremely fast. Well, yeah, because like, like you within the first five minutes, you know, Adam Warlock is destroying everything on nowhere and, you know, just trying, yeah. you know, and ends up uh, nearly killing a rocket and, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All in all, like I do want I do want to say this because you know I came into this saying that 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 I didn't you know fully like the movie you know there are aspects about it that I did not like. The movie was good, and I think that the you know it is one of the better ones that they've put out. I I would still probably put um No Way Home over this one as far as after in game movies but that would probably be it like i think this is probably you know the second best you know Wait, Marvel no, no way home, or far from home no way home far from no home was home. good but it, plot line plot line this is still better mm. you know uh far from home was just nostalgia it was good and i loved it 
But as far as like a plot line movie goes, it's, you know, not the best. Um, Mm -hmm. so many plot holes, but I I would put, I would put far from home ahead of, um, this, but this would be, this would be second because it still had a really good story, story storyline. I thought what they did with rocket was really good. I loved his arc. Um, and you know, Peter's arc was really good too. And like they ended it with quote unquote, the band breaking up. And I think they did that in a very good way. Like, it didn't seem mm. forced. Like, hey, we don't want to make another Guardians movie. We got to figure out a way to break up the band. No, no, no. They were like, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. And it did. Also, like, it's subtle. Like, you know, obviously the, the the major character development in this movie was from Rocket and from Peter. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it, it, the other characters were subtle. But I honestly really like uh, Drax's character development too. Well, because it was really, it's uh-huh. really been over. It's really been over the trilogy. But um, I think it was Nebula said it like you know, uh, yeah. I finally understand you. Know, you were meant to be a father, and it's like that. I got chills with that. Yeah. That <laughs> like, was a good line. Like I, 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 Drax, Drax has always been a key character in the Guardians movie. Really good for comic comic relief and just. You know, all around just a really good character. He's like the um I don't remember what his name is, but the actor who plays him has done an amazing job with playing Drax. Uh, um, Dave Batista, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh you said F- Dave Batista? Dave Batista. It's a B. Batista. Batista. Yep. You cut out when you said that. Um oh, okay. anyways. Uh but um he's done a really good job with the character of Drax and all of it. And yeah, his his development in this movie I thought was good. Like you said, most characters aside from Rocket were pretty subtle with their character development, but like you could see a difference from the beginning to the end. And mm. you know, uh, the the line with Drax not being a destroyer about him being a father, mm. like it it really is one of those things that you know you saw him interact with those kids, and it was like, yeah, this is this is what he was supposed to do. You know, he had a family, but he went on, you know, he went on on a quest for vengeance, but he's a dad. Yeah, see, I also, you know, I also, it's also kind of reminiscent of in the first and second Guardians when he actually talked about his family. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's very reminiscent of that because, like, you know, he, he was, you know, ob- obviously, but, you know, very... Well, you know, he's a, he was obviously a father. You know, you, you could tell that just by the way, yeah. you know, way he talked about his family. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, I think that his character development was really good. I think um, Nebula didn't really have as much as some of the others because I think her character development really came about in um, Volume Two and Infinity War and Endgame because she she had a lot more than the rest of the Guardians in Infinity War and Endgame. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and I like she, I like where she's at at this moment. Like I like where mm-hmm. her character is at right now. Yeah. Um, she, she did have subtle ones. I think I think probably the biggest thing with her was just how, like, maybe she came around a little bit. And it, this has more I get thing to do with Mantis than it does necessarily Man uh, Nebula. But it's like you know they're they're kind of a. Uh, their kind of back and forth throughout the the movie was was kind of Nebula's arc, but it was it was very small, very minimal because there's not really much to do with Nebula at this point, especially when you're already doing so much with other characters. Mm. So here, here's one thing that um I don't know if you you heard or not, but so I, I was uh I, I watched a couple um videos on people talking about uh this movie er- earlier and mm-hmm. one, one, one thing one of the guys mentioned was uh something james gunn had actually said after this movie come out so in the last or one of the last scenes when uh groot says i love you guys mm-hmm. so that was actually a line from fast and the furious they got it backwards <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was like i was like wait a minute i thought it was the guardians of the galaxy not fast and the furious like hold up <laughs> it's like we are family but no um 
So James James Gunn actually said, Groot is still talking. Groot. It's just you as an audience member have you know watched these characters grow so much that you can now understand them. Oh, I love that. Yeah, that's I'm, I'm great. Like, yeah, oh, that, that I love that. Yeah. I'm gonna watch that with so much more appreciation now. That is, that is really good. Like I, re- I really like that. Like, cause it seemed a little off, but like obviously I wasn't gonna hate on it or whatever. Cause like it's Groot, you can't hate on Groot. Mm. And then, uh, then now you tell me that it's like, oh, that's just that's just perfect. Yeah, like I heard that. I'm like, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> you know, knowing that like technically in universe he's still speaking Groot, like, but like you, you know. Yeah, we we know what he's saying now. Like, that's, is, oh, that's perfect. There's also that subtle thing in uh, like uh, I also kind of like the, the fact that like you know in the first Guardians movie, Peter was the one who's like, you know, what 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 is he saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you know they kind of had that the, now in there so that in there so that with Gamora. Yeah, but I also like that. I also like that moment at the end end when uh, Groot is talking to her. And she acknowledges him and then realizes what, you know, realizes that she understands. She she's talking. Yeah. Yeah. That that was that was a good scene. That was a good scene mm-hmm. with that. Root is such yeah. a good character. There's not really a whole lot to talk about him as far as like how the movies go. But mm-hmm. he is such a good character. Yeah. And I was like that fight that uh that scene in the like high evolutionary's throne room or whatever I, I don't know what else to call that oh, but you know what I mean that, yeah that scene Groot gets, that was I mean, <laughs> that was one of the be- that was one yeah one of the, out guns from everywhere <laughs> like <laughs> that that was that was uh when when we saw that uh Sarah leaned over and she was like you can tell that he was raised by Rocket. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like it was very reminiscent of that first that first scene uh in the first movie and it's like or that that scene in that first movie and it's like but just with more guns and this is like he keeps pulling them out and dropping them and then, and then peter slides in and grabs his two blasters and it's like oh that's just you could have done that better like mm. that was that was that was an amazing scene yeah i, I think i i, I really like the there were actually several really good uh, fight scenes. Like I said, I liked that one. I like the the hallway one was awesome. Uh, hallway one. Which one? You know, after they uh, they were on the um high evolutionary ship and they were you know like they were in the hangar and they walked down the hall, they walked through the hallway and all the um like oh so that, yes yes that was a really good. I, scene. I like that. And I also liked how they were like, so, you know, all the all the main cast of the Guardians um, were fighting kind of in unison and kind of mm-hmm. like collectively fighting together. And then you saw Gamora and she kind of fighted with by herself was kind of fighting. And like. She she kind of got. Outmatched at first, and then she, you know, ended up slicing the, the you know, uh, her opponent in half. But like at first she kind of got because she wasn't, you know. She mm-hmm. wasn't fighting with the group. She was fighting against the, you know, others. Yeah. And again, I know we already talked about it, but I, again, I think it was too short. I think they beat him too quickly, but I did like the fight scene against the, um... It looked very cool. The, it, it, the, the choreography was amazing. I think it, mm-hmm. uh... I think just the way they built up the character, it lasted way too quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really think, I think this is definitely how they need to do it when they get to Kang. Um, but they really need to make villains that are extremely smart and strategic. And make it where, yes, you might be able to beat him in hand-to-hand combat. But because of how much farther ahead he plans, he or she plans, you'll have to do more than that. You have to outsmart them. And then beating them in physical combat won't be, you know, as out of the blue. 
But like have it where it's like not a physical battle they had to fight, but a mental battle that they have to get over. And I feel like that would be a little bit easier for them to do in one movie, but not necessarily out of the blue that, you know, if they did, because they always have these physical, physically dominant, you know, villains, like the high evolutionary could control the gravity. Like he basically had like the force, you know, Mm -hmm. and it's like, you're not going to do much against that. But then they did because plot. Mm. But you can outsmart a character like you can outsmart someone, even if it's extremely difficult. You can do that. That makes sense. Mm. I think the way can like can conquer from the comics is I think that should be the way they should go with that character. I don't know if they will. Mm hmm. Um, because uh, if they want to make good movies, honestly, I don't. I don't think Marvel's too concerned about that anymore. No, right <laughs> they, now they're, they're just they, just cash they, they want to. They want to make money. Um, but the reason that you and me both were having problems with remembering where these characters were at the beginning of this movie is because that's all that Marvel cares about right now. Is they just care about putting out content. It's not a good or, good or bad thing. It's just content makes us money. Mm-hmm. And it's sad. Yeah. All in all, I think the the Guardians trilogy has en- ended on a really good note. Mm-hmm. I, I would binge don't... watch the Guardians trilogy. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh yeah, it's uh probably up there with the cap with like Captain America trilogy. Hmm. Yeah. Because that's nothing like um when you think when you think about it, like most most of the most of the trilogies mm-hmm. really only had like well not most but some some of them only had like a, a few really good movies like Ant Man the first one was good the second one is completely forgettable <laughs> and mm-hmm. um the third one will be forgettable once we forget it yeah. Um, it's a little fresh no, th- in the brain, so. I think just because it was very early on, the Iron Man trilogy is kind of is kind of underrated. Because yeah, I think Iron- in its time they weren't good movies, but now it's kind of like they're nostalgic, so they're kind of mm-hmm. good, you know. I, I okay, I Iron Man two is the weakest one, just because it's. Mm-hmm. I, I think it, I think they made Iron Man and Iron Man two way too close together. Yeah. But. I think Iron Man, the first one. I mean, obviously, obviously, you have to you have to like the first one. I mean, that's, that's what kicked off the whole MCU. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Iron Man three is good too because I, I like the um, story arc between Tony and Pepper. Yeah. Um, and I do think the Iron Man trilogy gets a lot more a lot more hate than it deserves, but mm. continue. And obviously, the I don't think the Captain America trilogy had a weak movie. Nope. That, Here's that, the thing. Is, I think they progressively the got better. I think they progressively got better, in my opinion. In my opinion, they got better. So the quote unquote weakest one would be the first one, but the first one's so amazing that you can't necessarily say that it's weak, you know? Yep. Yep. Uh, obviously, obviously the, the Thor, I guess it's a quadrilogy now, but. Ragnarok is the only like amazing. Uh, Ragnarok's amazing, but the others are just, eh. Yeah, the, the the first one is nostalgic still, so it's like yeah. Dark World Dark. is completely forgettable. Yeah, and I think that's, and... that's another thing too. That's another thing too. There aren't really any like bad MCU movies like okay on a on a scale of 1 to 10 I don't think there are any MCU movies that would rank lower than like a 3 or a 2 or a 3 but mm-hmm. that's the thing a movie that's like a 4 or a 5 or even a 6 is probably just is just as bad because most of those movies are forgettable and that that's that's the thing problem I think most of the MCU movies have is they're forgettable I, well, like in my opinion, with like when ranking Marvel movies, you rank them with Marvel movies. 
But I, like, I, 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 I agree with that. But these I'm... movies. Well, what, what I'm saying is like when you compare a lot of these movies to other movies, they still are pretty decent movies. But mm. like you said, they're forgettable. They don't really, you know, there's aspects of them that eh, don't really work that well. This, that, the other thing. Like, you know, you can probably sit down and, and enjoy like Thor: The Dark World, just fine. But if you compare it to the MCU, you're going to be like, eh, there's other ones to watch, you know? Exactly. Exactly. I think that's, I think that's a problem that most MC, most of the MCU movies suffer from is they're, you know, they're not, if, if you look at them in isolation, they're not necessarily bad movies, but well, they're, they're not bad. competing with, they're not competing with the market. They're competing with Marvel. They're competing with himself, you know? Exactly. exactly. And well, and I mean, you look at that too, like, the only other franchise that really is in that market is the DC stuff, and none of those movies are any good. So, yeah, no one's gonna watch those. So they got they got the market. They just you know are beating themselves. Which I mean, it's not like it's a bad thing because no matter if they release two movies and one does better than the other, well, they still get the profits from both movies. Like it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of, um. We went and saw it Saturday night, right? It mm-hmm. came out on Friday. Yep. That theater was empty. On a uh, Saturday was... night, it was empty. And I, I looked around the room, and I was like, this just shows where Marvel is at right now. And I think Like, that's, nobody I think cares that's to go think, and watch him. I think that's the, like, this was probably one of the last Marvel movies that I'm like, it, I was actually really excited for. Yeah. I mean, what's the next movie? The Marvels? Like, I, okay, I will say, I, I did see the trailer, we did see the trailer on it when, uh, on I gotta Google. watch, the, I gotta watch the TV show now <laughs> to watch that movie. Yeah, that's nothing. <laughs> I don't, I haven't watched that. Excuse me. Um, I haven't watched that, but like, it looks better than I thought it would, but again, I it's don't a trailer. really I don't really want to go to the theater to watch it. It's, it's one of those things. You just wait till it comes out on Disney and Plus in like a month also, or two. And it's just also, fun. it comes out in November. Mm-hmm. It's got to compete with Dune Chapter 2 and about a Songbirds and Snakes. Like, yeah, it, it, it's not going to do well. Yeah, but that's another thing. Like you, like you said, I think it was with, with this movie. I noticed that too. With the theater was kind of empty for opening weekend. Like, it wasn't. It wasn't yeah. completely empty, but for opening weekend, it was pretty empty. Um, I think that's another thing. That's one thing that a lot of people feel feel this way. Is like we're just kind of marvelled out. Like it's not necessarily that. Yeah. Like I, said, I I was excited for this movie, but yeah, I am marvelled out. I, I think I think part of it is that like. I was, I was like, okay, when, when Doctor Strange came out, I was excited for that. I think a lot of it is they have so many characters that nobody cares about right now, and they're releasing movies for, but the movies that have pre-existing characters that you've already attached to, you're curious. You want to you see where their arcs go, where their stories end, or whether they mm-hmm. end or not, or where they're going to go. So, like, yeah, Thor. I was excited for Thor. I was excited for Doctor Strange. I was excited for this movie. But they're pre-existing characters, and as they fizzle out, I'm gonna get less and less excited. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, okay, Sh- Shang Chi is a, is a good example. I think mm-hmm. as far as uh, because I think uh, I think guard, I think they're in phase five now or something like that. I think so. But as far phase, as like phase phase four, four, I think ended with one of the TV shows. Which shows okay. just kind of how screwed Marvel is right now. Like, I, it's okay, it's all but, over the place. But Phase Four, like one of the one of the stronger movies in Phase Four, was Shang Chi. Yeah, I thought it was good. I I, th- I thought Shang Chi was good, but again, like it character that we don't really care about, and it's just setting up more stuff in the MCU that I'm probably not gonna care too much about. Like yeah, the whole look, you know, the whole thing with uh, the Infinity Saga is they set up this whole thing, and like you know, you, like you, you know, we we I I went to go like I started watching these movies before Avengers came out. Yeah, 
Like, I, I think I the first remember watched when Avengers it. came out. Yeah, I do too. I, I started watching this, this stuff like you know before Avengers came out, and so you know I, I've been attached to these like original characters for a while. And I think that's mm-hmm. why in game. I think that's why uh, in game the emotional stuff in in game hit so hard is because like you know like yeah Iron Man kicked off this whole thing and then you know you see you see him die after after tw- wait almost twelve years two thousand eight to twenty nineteen almost twelve years yeah so yeah like you you, you see this. Like, and you know they they built up all these characters from all this, and they built up Thanos from the beginning. You know, Thanos was in the first Avengers movie, and you know, so, so you built you built all this stuff up. But I think Marvel's problem now is they don't really know what exactly they're doing because, like, you know, they're building up Kang the Conqueror. They're planning mm-hmm. on doing like secret wars and stuff. What's going on with Skrulls right now? What like you know there's, mm-hmm. there, there's so I, many plot lines that they have going right now. It's one, it's hard to keep up with, and two, mm-hmm. it's hard to get invested in. Yeah, I think, and and, and I'm not going to say I disagree with anything you've just said. I think one thing is Marvel starting out in the Infin- in, in the Infinity Saga. Marvel was starting out. So while yes, they might have had a plan, not everything was uh, set in stone because they were like, hey, we still got to get the ball rolling. We still got to get our audience here. So they'd lay little Easter eggs here and there that you could link back to, but they weren't forcing, you know, a whole, there wasn't a whole entire movie that was setting a plot for later down the line because they're like, well, no, we got to make sure this movie does well so that we can make the next one, you know? And they eventually started getting the ball rolling and they kept with that formula. Where it's like, hey, we're not going to force anything too much. Well now, well, now Marvel has, you know, they're losing their grip. But I don't know if they necessarily feel that way. Um, but they have their hold on on the movie industry. Or have had it. And they're like, oh, we can do whatever we want. And soon they're going to realize, no, you, you can't. Because if you make crappy movies, no one's going to ever watch them. And mm-hmm. if you make things that are too confusing, no one's going to care. Mm-hmm. Also, one thing, I think I've, I've heard people address this before, but this is one thing I've, I've said since they first started teasing like multiverse stuff. It makes no sense to set the MCU in the 616 universe because the 616 universe is the comic book universe. Yeah. Like, wait, isn't the MCU me, in a different one? I thought they, they thought about that. In Doctor Strange, they called uh, the mainline MCU universe the Six One Six. Okay, I thought they had, they had said something about that because the comic book universe was the Six One Six. I thought they were like, all right, well, the MCU is like, so and they, they gave some they, other number for it. They teased it in uh, Far From Home when uh, um, Mysterio was talking about that. They teased it. Six one six, which I would have been fine with if that because you know Mag- Magneto said that uh, not Magneto, uh, Mysterio, Magneto's different Marvel, <laughs> Mysterio, um, you know he he said that he you know that their Earth was six one six, the MCU universe, but you know he wasn't actually from mm-hmm. another universe, which I was I was fine with that with that reference, but then in Multiverse of Madness I'm like that makes no sense because like I said it. it I think it would have been it would be cooler if, you know, the MCU existed alongside the, the comic book universe. Yeah, yeah. Um, speaking of all, you you mentioned Magneto, and that got me thinking about the X Men. That also got me thinking about Deadpool. So they are supposed to be making a Marvel Deadpool movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, uh. They, they were like talking about you know bringing Hugh Jackman in or whatever for for the movie and like maybe crossing over some of that. If they bring Deadpool into the MCU, like I love the Deadpool movies, they're hilarious. I love Ryan Reynolds; mm-hmm. he's great. Um, I'm gonna want to see it, 
how much do you think like the 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 date I think that they were planning or that they had set for Deadpool was supposed to be like twenty thirty, some of like that. So that's like mm. seven years away from now. Do you think that, like, with how how hard it is to watch MCU movies now, do you think Deadpool is going to be its own kind of a thing, or do you think like if they bring him into the MCU? that he's going to be tied in with so many other characters that you're going to have to know what everything else is? Or do you think they're going to make it more like the other movies where, you know, it, it's a good standalone movie and it kind of maybe finishes some of the trilogy of the Deadpool movies? But, you know, maybe at the end or halfway through, you kind of introduce and say, hey, yeah, now Deadpool is in the same universe as, you know, uh, the MCU and we can use this character now. Like, do you think they're going to basically okay. screw up Deadpool? <laughs> I think they should do Deadpool as more of a standalone movie, and then you can tease later movies mm-hmm. in like in credit scenes or whatever. <clears throat> I honestly don't know if they're going to. Yeah, I hope they don't mess up Deadpool because Ryan Reynolds Deadpool is the best thing to ever happen to Mar to uh. Comic book movies, like, you know, MCU can do whatever it wants, but those movies are good. And uh, I just hope that they don't mess it up with the third one. <laughs> I think it's, it's supposed to be it's supposed to be Deadpool 3. So, assumably, assume, presumably, we had this problem last week, I think. Presumably, it's going to be the same as, you know, it's going to be in order of, you know, 1, 2, and 3. It's supposed to same character, same universe, same yada, yada, yada. Just maybe at the end of it, you bring them in to the, you know, MCU. Which I'd be fine if they bring them in at the end. But if they make it the whole entire plot ties into everything else, it's like, well, now I have to know, you know, 10 years or so of uh, plot to to understand this. So that's a little bit too much. It also makes no sense, like, to me, that the, um, the whole uh, Sony villain verse. Like, you know, it's not technically canon, but it's, uh, or it's not technically part of the MCU, but it is, like, Oh, you're talking about the, um, like, Venom and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like the, I like Venom. I like, uh, Tom Hardy as Venom, but I don't want them to get involved with the MCU. Okay, see, okay, here's my thing with that. I think Tom Hardy makes a really good Venom, but at the same time, I think those movies are, well, I think the first one was, the first one was pretty good, the, the, se- the second one wasn't as good, but I still think it's so dumb to have Venom without Spider-Man. Yeah. And, like, I, honestly, I think uh, Sony... I've heard people saying this too, like, um, because uh, I think it was in Morbius, they, uh, had some, like, tease the Andrew Spider-Man. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like, they had some of the same buildings and stuff, like, I think they had the same Oscorp building, and they had, um, some stuff like that, but, uh. Yeah. I think, okay. I think that would actually be kind of a. I think they should have done that is I I know it would confuse the crap out of people to have two Spider-Mans at the same time which is probably why they haven't done this but give give Andrew another Spider-Man movie where he fights Venom yeah. well see fights I think that's Tom the, Hardy the, the like, reason that that's the reason that they didn't bring in Spider-Man with Venom because they wanted Venom to be an anti-hero. They didn't want him to necessarily necessarily be the villain. But if you bring in Spider-Man, well, he has to be the villain, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think at this point, I think Venom is past the point of being a villain. Like, I don't think that there would there would be a good cause for him and Spider-Man to fight unless Spider-Man initiates it, which mm-hmm. that would be a bad choice for Spider for uh, them to do with Spider-Man. So I don't really I think they're past that point, but I am interested to see because I completely forgot about that. 
I am interested to see where they, see where they go, and also interested to see what they're doing with um, Michael Keaton with uh, him in that universe now. Like that just is really weird. Oh yeah, I again I don't un- so okay. You know, there's a lot of there are a lot of people like when the Avengers stuff first started that. You know, didn't really understand the distinction between like the Fox X Men and Marvel Studios Avengers, mm-hmm. which you know because yeah they're they're both Marvel, I mean yeah, but I think the Sony thing that they're trying to do I don't even know what they're, I don't even know what they're trying to do but whatever they're trying to do with these like Spider Man villain movies, it's going to confuse people way more than that than the the um Fox X Men yeah. stuff ever did because. You even have characters crossing over. It. Mm-hmm. You, you can't use the same actors if you don't want them to be the same characters. And if you want them to be the same characters, explain. <laughs> like, just explain. And it's like, so, I think Sony also has made some of these decisions without even talking to Marvel Studios. It, se- or it seems well, that's like... Another thing. They- how, how does the contract work with Spider-Man? So... Because, uh, like, can Sony still use Spider-Man in movies if they're leasing the, well, however the contracts work, however they technically are given them to Marvel? If Marvel's using Spider-Man, can Sony still use it? Like, how, how does their agreement work yeah, with I, all that? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But, actually, it, it's, all that stuff is too confusing. To, yeah, like, it, it's like, can, can we have two Spider-Mans? Is that, like, legally allowed? Mm-hmm. And it's like, you know, like, what? And, and yeah, you're and, talking about and, Sony doing some of this without maybe Marvel's consent as far as like, mm. you know, adding characters in here and there. And it's like, it's, it just gets so confusing, especially when both mm. both heads aren't aren't in the same direction, you know, pointing in the same mm. direction. And see, so that's nothing to like, I'm, I mean, I, I haven't been, I haven't kept up with, with Marvel stuff as much as I once did because I'm like, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm starting to get mar- marveled out, but you know, I, I I know more about it than a lot than mo- most like casual moviegoers, and even I am yeah. confused with a lot of the stuff. Mm-hmm. It because it, like I said, it makes it, no sense. <sighs> anyway, that was a. Do you, do you have any more th- anything else to say about this? Oh no, no! I think in on confusion is a very good place to to end that conversation. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, let's hop back to the actual main topic of this video real quick and give our final st- final thoughts on uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay. I'll let you go first. Well, um, you know, we really should have put a spoiler warning <laughs> at the beginning of this. <laughs> maybe maybe on it. the uh, title. I, I'm, maybe on the title. Well, I'll uh, I'll probably will, I probably will go in and re-record something or edit record in something one. and edit yeah. in one just because uh probably not a bad idea. It's a movie because even even though even though people probably should know, you know, not everyone's the brightest. So yeah, um, I shouldn't say that, but I am because it's true. Well, I, I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna edit that out. So yeah. Oh no! Don't don't! I don't want to edit it out. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, yeah. If you ignored the spoiler warning and you haven't seen the movie, go watch it. It's really good. Um, if you have watched it, uh, yeah, go watch it again. Um, Comment down below what your thoughts on the movie are. Yeah. yeah. All in all, I think it's I think it was a really good movie, and. I don't know if yeah, you have anything like, more like to add I was to that. Earlier, I was going to say, it was like I said earlier, like, you know, it's a solid movie. It's a good movie. Probably the second best, in my opinion, they put out since, you know, um, Endgame. But, you know, there there are areas that I thought they could have improved on. But the story was good. They had a really good story. And I think that they told it aspects of it well. And then aspects of it, they could have done a lot better with it. So. Really good movie. If you haven't seen it, if you have seen it, you know, you don't have to go waste your money and 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 watch it again. Just you know, 
Maybe check it out. Before I before I get too off on that, I do also think with this one, um, there was a nice aspect where you had to remember where the last place you left the Guardians of the Galaxy was. Mm-hmm. But you don't really have to know as much about every other thing. Like, there's a lot yep. less that you had to know to watch this movie, and I did like that aspect. The the only thing that um that most people probably wouldn't watch that you that would be nicer to watch to kind of know exactly or know why it picks up right there is the Guardians Christmas special. Mm-hmm. Um Yeah. If you watch everything Guardians of the Galaxy related, well, being the first two movies, you'd probably want to watch the Infinity War and Endgame movies to know where Gamora's at and then watch mm-hmm. the Christmas special. You you'll yeah. you'll have ex- you know exactly what's going on. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, they're in the first little bit in uh, Love and Thunder, but it's not really that they don't really do anything. They just drop Thor off. Yeah. Basically. So. But uh, since these are supposed to be our final thoughts, good movie. Go watch it. I'm good. Mm. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to uh, what's new with you. What's new? What's new? What's new? What's new? What's new? What's new with you? Yeah. So, Wesley, what is new with you? Well, let's see. I think last since last we've had this segment, uh, I've seen the Mario movie, um, wow. which I thought was really good. Um, and I downloaded uh, on the Switch which I probably shouldn't have for the simple reason of I don't play enough, but I will try. Um, but I downloaded uh, KOTOR. KOTOR. Yeah, KOTOR. Uh, Knights okay. of the Old Republic, and I did uh, the first, the bo- both both games, the, f- the first and second one. So, because um, I, I played through the second, the first one before, but it's been so long, so I wanted to play through it again, and then I was like, well, I've never played through the second one, so I was like, I want to get that too. And they're on sale, so I was like, I have to get them. So, mm-hmm. but uh, I haven't played through much of it. I'm still on the uh, in the first part on the indoor spire, um, mm-hmm. trying to get get off that. So there's not a whole lot to talk about that, but I can talk about the Mario movie. Okay, I have not seen it. Um, I I do know pretty much what it's. I mean, it's not really that complex of a plot. So you can't watch really... the Mario movie. No, I haven't watched it. Um, oh, I thought you had gone and seen it. No. Nope. Um, okay. It's not really, it wasn't really it's that really much good. You should check it out. I'll, I'll probably wait till it comes out on streaming. <laughs> okay. I. Okay. Well, what 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 do you know about it? Like, you know, what what's because you haven't seen it. You might know what the plot is, but like, I guess you don't really have an opinion on the movie. Um. I mean, from everything I've seen seen on it, it's, it looks pretty good. Um, I think casting wise, I, I think we already talked about this, but casting wise, it's I think it was really good. Um, they, Jack Black. they did a very good job. Yep. They did from a very what, good job with it. And Chris Pratt as Mario was was a good choice. They did very mm-hmm. well with that, and I think he did really well in that role. Like yep. he got a lot of slack for it, but he did a phenomenal job as as mm-hmm. Mario. And from everything I've seen, too, Jack Black killed it as Bowser. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he did an amazing job. Um, mm-hmm. it, it was a, it was a good movie that you know I, I was uh, like I, I like going out and watching movies in the theater. Like sometimes it can be a little bit pricey, but you know mm. it's it's a fun experience going out. Like it's kind of like uh, for sports fans, like you know going to the going to the actual arena and watching the game. Like you know you might be all the way up in the nosebleeds. But it's still cool because you got the the whole entire environment. It's like it's kind of the same way when you go into a movie theater. It's like yeah, you could watch it at home, but you know it's kind of nice to be able to be in in a movie theater and kind of get the full experience. And uh, mm. you know, well, and I think there's that's, so that's few too, movies like, uh, out that come out. That's another thing too. Like after uh, COVID, I think the first first big movie that came out after COVID was the um, the Godzilla versus Kong. Mm-hmm. 
And I think the reason that that yeah, I, I mean, it, it, from from what I've, from what I've seen, it hasn't didn't do like amazing box office, but it I think it did yeah. better box office because people just wanted to go to the movies. <laughs> yeah, I know. Me and Sarah went and watched it because it was about the only thing on there that was you know decent. And mm-hmm. like neither one of us have really ever been into Godzilla or Kong, and so it was like, go. but we went and watched it. And it's like, I, w- I want to watch the other ones now because I was like, hey, that was good. Let me go back and watch and find out mm-hmm. more about the storyline. But it was like, we just went and watched it because we were like, all right, you know, let's, let's go watch this. It's a, you know, action movie. Let's let's watch that. Go to the movie theaters. Yeah. You you never yeah. um you never watched uh, Batman, Batman v Superman, did you? Nope. Maybe won't. Well, well you don't need to now because Godzilla vs. Kong is the exact same plot, except they did it better. I think you told me that before, but yeah, don't it's, worry. I, it's, I literally the exa- on. it's literally the exact same movie, but Godzilla vs. Kong did it better. <laughs> uh, um, speaking of Batman, um, have you seen the trailer for uh, Flashpoint? Yes. I do. I am very curious as to what, what that movie is going to look like. Um, I think we actually did have yeah. that scheduled to talk about that and after it came out. So, um, we probably will talk about that so. shortly after it comes out. Um, well, these are, these are pre-spoilers. My thought is they better not screw up Michael Keaton as Batman. Mm-hmm. If they do that, I'm gonna be pissed. I like the references though that, that they gave. They gave a couple references to the original Batman movie. And uh, I was like, well, at least they did. I'm either, either they did the research or, let, or they let Michael Keaton do some of the writing. Like, one of the two. Let's get mm. nuts. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, Michael Keaton's the yeah. only character that's... It's going to be an interesting Michael movie. I don't... But yeah, Michael Keaton's the only character that can't... Or only uh, character that can mess up because, uh, you know... Ezra Miller's kind of already messed up his own character, and uh, none yeah. of the other characters are really that important. So I want to say about that. Um. <laughs> yep. Moving on. What's what? What you been up to, David? It's been it's been a while um, since we've talked about this stuff. I, I'm trying to think. It has been a while. I'm trying to think of what I've already mentioned. I think last I time know. you mentioned that you had gotten one of the new Elder Scroll games or something like that. Well, no, I um I had been uh I started playing I started replaying Skyrim again. Um, replaying Skyrim, okay, okay, whatever it was, yeah. I knew I knew it was something along those lines. Yeah. I actually, I think I had already beaten Skyrim at that point too, but I actually did beat Skyrim. I don't know if I mentioned it before or not. If I did, I thought you had yeah. already beaten Skyrim like well, a while I have. ago. <laughs> I have, but you're I talking about it again. again. Yeah. Beat it again. Okay. So you yeah. so you started playing through it and you've already finished your playthrough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And we're, we're all we're all on the same page now. Now it as of recording this, I have not. But as of this episode coming out, I will probably I will have played through probably probably at least several hours of Legends of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. It comes out Friday, okay. so I have not, you know, I've not played it yet, obviously, because we're recording this before Friday. But yeah, by, by the time this podcast goes up, I will already probably have several hours in that game <laughs> because it. And, and I'm I still, going. I need to still play. Th- I still need to play through uh, what Fallout and then uh, Fallen Order. Hmm. David, I need help. No, it's not that big. Well, I mean, they're, they're, those are shorter games. Yeah, but when you have no time, there's no such thing as a short game. <laughs> yeah, when you have no time, a 30-hour game is still a long game. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, uh, I'd like see, to get into gaming a lot more. Yeah. Um, I actually have. Re- I actually did start. Uh, I've got the original Battlefronts on my Xbox, and I've actually been playing those a good bit lately. Because 
Oh, cool. Just nostalgia. <laughs> um. Yeah. I know you, you don't really, or you, you only really played those with us when uh, you were playing on our PlayStation 2, right? I played them a little bit with y'all. I played them with um, Thomas sometimes, too, with on his Xbox, because he had the, uh, okay. the original Xbox. Um, yeah. So I have I have memories of both, but um, I've also played it a little bit um, since since they started doing the the backwards compatibility stuff. Um, I think actually originally I got it on Steam um, when they first started mm-hmm. doing that, uh, and I played through it a couple of times. Obviously, I don't know the maps as well as you or your brothers do because y'all played it a lot more than I do did. Um, but uh, you know, it was still kind of cool going back and like seen some some things that i remembered and some things that were just new because you know there were there were so many so many battlefields to play on and so many ways to do it you know obviously in the short and, times and that honestly, i played it we, is, we never got around to all that like i, I know the, the graphics are like kind of rough but honestly they're 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 not really that bad when, I, when the like, game look, come out that so battlefront the first one came out in 2004. Battlefront 2 came out in 2005. 2005? For that time, that's not that bad, though. Mm-mm. No, you, you think like original I, Xbox, PlayStation 2? No, they're not really bad. Those, those are like top-of-the-line graphics for that time frame, you mm-hmm. know? Now, one, one thing I kind of wish they would... I, again, I think it's probably li- a bunch of licensing issues, which is a problem with most games. Um... Those would be legal those stuff. Would makes be, things. Stuff. Those would actually be cool games to have on Switch because those, you know, so the Switch is a really underpowered console, um, but games yeah. from that gen- from that era will run really well. So I think those games would be really cool to have on Switch. But I don't think. Well, I thought it was real. I, I wasn't even entirely sure that I was going to be able to find because I I'd never looked into it. But I was like, hey, let me look and see if I can find Knights of the Old Republic on on the switch i looked it up and sure enough they both were on there and i was kind of surprised by that but i you know yeah i agree like knights of the old republic is is similar um style in animation um mm-hmm. and it's like yeah you could run that pretty well on the switch like the battlefront games it's like that would be that would be really cool mm-hmm. yeah i actually um have all the all the original or well not all most of the original um star wars games because all of them are backwards compatible on the Xbox. So I actually mm-hmm. have all of them digitally. I have, well, split between Steam, Xbox, and Switch. I have them all. Yeah. Um. Well, actually, no. I still need to... I, I realize I didn't have uh, the Episode 3 game. And that was actually a pretty good game from what I remember. I remember playing that on the PlayStation 2. I, I might be remembering it wrong. But from what I remember, it was a... It was a a pretty decent game, um, but yeah. I have all I have all the ones that I at least want to play because I have both Force Unleashed, both both Kotor's, um, I have both Battlefronts on Switch. I have the Jedi Knight games. I have uh, Knights of the Old or not Knights, uh, Republic Commando, and uh, the Star or the Pod Racer game. Uh, um, Republic Commando is on the uh, Switch. Yes. Okay. Um, if you ever want to play it, I have it physically. If you want to borrow it. Okay, I might want to just look into getting it at some point. Um, because like I played through uh Knights of the Old Republic, but like a lot of those older ones, that was about the only one that I played through because you could get Knights of the Old Republic on mobile, and so that's how I yep. played it. Um, but I would like to eventually go back and play a lot of those older Star Wars games. One, because there's a lot of lore in it that is, you know, still canon. And even if it's not necessarily canon, it's still really cool. Um, Because it's uh, usually about things that weren't seen in the movies. So, like, uh, Force Unleashed, that's not canon anymore. But they did take elements from that in uh, um, Rebels. They brought the, um, they brought the, like, Clone Commandos in Clone Wars, even though the game's not canon anymore. So like there are elements yeah. of, from these from these Golden Age Star Wars games that are uh, that's the thing is, I wanna I, 
I want to get into some of like the old games like that. I want to get in some of the comics and some of like the books that they have on like some of the extended universe stuff and all. Cause it's like, yeah, sure. It may not be canon, but it's some really cool stories. And mm. if I'm, if I, you know, you might know and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like this was also from a time that like George Lucas was over Star Wars. So it's like, mm. this is, this is what George Lucas would have wanted. And now it's been scrapped because Disney owns Star Wars. But like, you know, George Lucas is like, yeah, I approve that. That's okay. That can be Star Wars, you know? And it's like, well, now he has no say over what is and isn't Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And it's like, so so learning some of those those stories is, is, is cool and fun and just, you know, there's some good stories. Mm. Now, one thing I'll say, like, as far as, like, uh, story-wise, I, mean, I know it's not really... Like Battlefront, you're not playing it for the, the you know, the campaign mode's cool, but like, you're not really, like, you don't go out and get Battlefront for the campaign mode. It's not that kind of game. The campaign, but yeah. uh, but uh, the in the campaign mode, you know, you basically play as uh, um the clones and, and then the um Empire, and yeah. like it's from it's from the clones' point of view through like all that. But one thing I don't really like about it is like. You hear like uh, in some of the cutscenes, the clones or one of the clones, the cl- the clones narrating it talks about like basically knowing Order sixty six is coming. Hmm. I'm like, I like the way Clone Wars did that better because, yeah, like, well, especially because in Clone Wars you have. Uh, like actual relationship between like the clones and the Jedi, so you know they kind of had to do yeah. it that way. But uh, well, it makes it more... much, that much better. Yeah, it makes it that much better too for for them turning on them because, like, you think about it, these clones, while very a uh, lot a lot in number and honestly a force to be reckoned with as well, should have been no match for the Jedi. But they caught the Jedi off guard, which is why they were able to kill so many high level masters and, you know, uh, other Jedi. Like, it was because they caught them off guard, not because they were more powerful. Like, the, many, many, most of the Jedi, especially the Jedi masters, would have probably been able to defend themselves long enough to get away had they been ready for an attack like this. Like, most of them had been in situations where they had been surrounded and survived. But because they were caught off guard, like some of them sensed it a second before, but didn't have time to actually react, you know. But well, actually, the only the relationship, the only Jedi, the only Jedi on screen that actually sensed it were uh, um, Ahsoka Tana and had, uh, Yoda and Kali Munda, uh, Mundi, whatever. Um, but you also, I mean, but you do think about it, like um. Even uh, what's her name? Uh, what's the um blue uh, Sakura? Sakura, yeah. You like looking at her like she sensed it, but it was too late at that point. Like it was literally a split second before she got blasted that she sensed it. But it's because it was that mm-hmm. just out of the blue, you know. Like um, Kai Kai. I'm not going to pronounce his name right now. Caddy Mundi. Yes. It's been a long day. Uh, my words are slurring. Uh, anyways, he, 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 you know, full on stopped and turned around and he blocked a couple bullets, you know, because he, he, he came to the, con- he figured this out beforehand. But he was a little confused. And then Yoda, obviously being the grandmaster, he, you know, he sensed it and he, took care of the the two clones that were trying to kill him. Um it's a miracle. The fact that Obi-Wan was so high up and out of the way is probably why he survived Order 66. Um cuz I'm not honestly sure if if he would have he probably would have suffered a similar fate as the other Jedi masters just because he wasn't you know tremendously better than them if if any, you know. He probably would have gotten blasted as well, but yeah, I think I think Clone Wars did a really good job with that, as yeah. opposed to what you're telling me about 
I, I've never played through the Battlefront 2 campaign, so. Yeah. But, yeah, I, th- I think, uh, yeah, Clone Wars really did a good job with that. Mm-hmm. Well. I guess we'll talk more Star Wars later. <laughs> yeah, but so we don't really need to get, I mean, I know we're not talking about the movies directly, really, but, uh, we, do, we don't There's need one to thing I was thinking about. we're going to talk about that. Yeah, that that was one thing I was thinking about is like with us talking about the movies, there's so much to talk about with a uh, with the um, the shows and the shoot offs and all that stuff that we might need to dedicate um, a uh, like a, after talking about all the movies, we might need to dedicate another episode uh, to like the different talk shows, about Clone Wars, and talk about Rebels, and talk about yeah, yeah. There's like so much though to the Star Wars universe that makes it really hard. It's like talking about Marvel. Like there's just so much to it. You, it, it's hard to get it all in. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, well, I'm sure. I'm sure as people listen to this podcast, they will hear a lot of Star Wars. Yeah. Well, I think that's about all we got. Well, it's not, but it's about where we're going to end it. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll let's be honest, David. For we could talk while. for a long time. Yeah, yeah. No, no one All wants right. to hear us talk for that long, so. All right. Well, let's move back in and talk about the next subject. <laughs> no. Uh, um, I don't know if we can do this. <laughs> no. Um, it, yeah. I, th- I, think, I think that's about it. So, uh, yeah, let's head to an outro. Well, Explorers, that's about all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Let us know what you thought in the comments down below, or you can DM us on Instagram at DownTheRabbitTrailYT. And be sure to join us next week on The Trailcast. Explorers, that's about all the time we have for today. What's my line? <laughs> we hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Okay. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode.